Okay, welcome to a hot topic podcast. The topic of this travel, this travel, what is travel? Okay, so let's give some background for this podcast. This is my 10th ever podcast. It is my eighth hot topic podcast and my second on location podcast. So where are we? We're on the beach. This is also a beach podcast. Um, and we are on the beach at Lions Club, the North Lions Club in Mount Vernon, Washington State, looking out over the Skagit River on a beach in the park. And so this hot topic podcast, the topic is travel restrictions encountered due to COVID-19. And so I'm going to start with uh, COVID-19 has sideswiped my, sideswiped my life. And so we're going to go over that. So that's this first topic is October, November, December 2019 to early 2020. And it's COVID-19 debut in my life and sideswiping my life and goals slash dreams. So what do I mean by that? So I moved home. I quit my job and I was I had this goal of pursuing, so I was going to, what was the plan? So I moved home, I quit school in October, I quit my jobs in October 2019, all of that in October 2019, started moving home on Halloween in 2019, which is the 31st of October, finished moving my stuff home about the 13th to the 14th of November 2019, and a week later, I started hearing rumors of a new virus and so this is just a healthy reminder that viruses can exist before they outbreak in fact they have to <laughs> like uh, you can't spread something that doesn't exist and so there's just some basic common sense there that I think um, in talking about COVID-19 people I haven't heard anybody go so far as to making a mistake and saying oh COVID-19 didn't exist before 2020 which is actually wrong COVID-19 the 19 means 2019 I think is it's identified um, so but usually it, I work in science and I work in geology and usually it takes some time to actually be able to put a name to something and identify something um, like identification includes usually a labeling component and it can take years sometimes um, for things to be fully fully labeled and so in November 2019 about a week so about the 20th to 21st of November 2019 I started hearing rumors I don't know if it's true or not um, like if it's true it, it might outbreak because this sounds like it might be a big one and so that was the, about the 20th to 21st of November 2019 so what was the original plan I had moved so I had quit my job and I moved home and I was gonna my goal was to go into the aerospace in, industry and specifically working on wear resistance in for different parts in turbine engines and airplanes so yes i am a nerd so I, and I like materials and i studied and still study materials under extreme conditions so high temperature and high pressure and so i worked with really hot and really high pressure so in volcanoes and the closest thing in the manufacturing world to that is the aerospace in industry and airplane engines. So I was gonna take what I kind of did for natural systems and use it in materials design and kind of addressing fracture and fatigue issues with airplane engines. And the other path that I was thinking about if this first one didn't work out was working on the internal structure of cars. So another place that can get high temperatures and high pressures is car crashes. And so I was specifically thinking about working on the frames of cars. So like the steel frames of a car, that determines whether your car kind of, is one of the determining factors, factors as to whether a car collapses in on itself during a car crash, for example. So car safety. Um, and so that was the other thing that my volcano kind of work ha could apply to. And so the manufacturing industry during COVID-19 got slammed and especially the aerospace industry and a bunch of manufacturing plants got shut down, especially where I live in Washington state. And so that ended up not being manifesting those goals and dreams I had. And so, yeah, so that was really frustrating. I was going to get that started around December, 2019. So getting back to the, I heard something rumors in 2000, in November 2019, by December 2019, I got a text message from Iceland Air being like, you have a change to one of your flights. And I was like, uh-oh, is this the same thing as this virus? And in early 2020, 
Iceland there, the rest of my flights either got canceled or changed and they sent a confirmation that my flights indeed, so this earlier communication from the 6th of December, 2019, and these subsequent changes were due to COVID-19. So COVID-19 hit my life directly earliest in some form, not the virus itself, but effects due to the virus uh, as early as the 6th of December, 2019. And so when I got that text, I was like, all right, I'm not gonna go forward because is this this thing or not? And then by January, COVID-19 started spreading. It started a, to be a big outbreak. And I, my, and then, so Washington State within the United States of America got the most number of cases and as the starting point it was not the first we were not the first place to shut down completely though um even though we did have this first surge of cases and so that was january to march we had this initial surge might have lasted into april and so uh, we were living our life we even went to sky nursery and got some shamrocks for saint patrick's day in march 2020 right uh, first yeah St. Patrick's Day 2020, my mom and I did, and we planted those shamrocks and stuff, and then like it was like the next week or two that everything shut down, uh, except for essential services. And then there was a resurgence, and so I'm, I'm, I'm going to transition, so that was the uh, COVID de debut in my life. And then we're moving on to the second thing. So there was this initial spike right after my mom and I, or right, I should say during when my mom and I, there was a little bit of a lag time and we have all of these cases, what do we do? How do we shut it down? It's not like places like California where the number of cases lagged a little bit. They were really good at shutting things down fast. In Washington, we were a little bit slower than they were in shutting things down in part because we had all of these cases. And so it's a, it's a little bit, I, I think, how it came across as someone who's not working in government and not shutting things down, kind of came across as it's harder to shut things down when people already have the virus, like, and there's a bunch of cases with it, uh, as opposed to shutting things down and then being able to address cases as they come up, um, which was, as it came across in the news to me, kind of the case for California. So they were ahead of us in, in response in that sense, and us being Washington State. And so the second it topic, and I've already started talking about it a little bit, is spikes in my activity. So we went to Sky Nursery on St. Patrick's Day, and then things shut down literally within the next week or two. And then I started going, I didn't really go to a whole lot of places, started going to places. And then there was a second kind of surge during the summer, and that was when I was being really active. And I was like, huh, funny that my increased activity corresponds with the um, correlation does not like mean causation but like it, it was just correlated I was like huh I'm being more active and this virus is on the rise and then the only trip I go on in 2020 just my luck I go to Chelan County to see my aunt and uncle in Kashmir Washington State and when I'm there we get this huge surge of cases so this is November 2020 and it is the highest case rate that Chelan County has ever seen and I'm like yep time to go back home and there was like a storm coming on Stevens Pass and stuff like that that snowed several feet and stuff and I was just like yep all systems are saying go back to Seattle so I did and so those are kind of the spikes uh that the three kind of spikes and they correlated to me being active and uh me taking a trip <laughs> and so moving on to the third topic so I'm going to talk about specific travel restrictions that I have encountered due to COVID-19 during this time. The first was local effects. So what I mean by local is travel within one zip code or county. So that's just a few miles radius. And so like my dad and I, we went to the dump. It's also called a recycling and transfer station. And we had to actually provide proof of residency to be allowed to use the dump, to be able to use the recycling and transfer station. So ID and proof of residency. Uh, and if you were not from our zip code, you were not allowed into the transfer station. So that we had really, and they were enforced and they had like enforcement at the on the premises at the entrance and exit that kind of thing it was a huge deal so we were not allowed to travel very far on the county level as well there i ended up traveling so this is kind of so that's local level is we they 
tr local travel only was enforced at certain locations. It was not enforced at like the grocery store, but it was at these kind of mun municipality locations such as the transfer station. And then I'm gonna include this kind of on state level. So between counties, travel between counties, which includes my cashmere trip. So what did I encounter there? I encountered, I went to the San Juan Islands in spring and summer, if I'm recalling correctly, of 2020. And you were not supposed to go unless you met a certain set of criteria or you were trying to stay healthy and stuff like that. And I had a knee injury, so I was trying to stay healthy. And, and the, I was trying to find places where I was like, okay, I need a little bit of terrain and I need to be able to move my knee uh, in that kind of thing. And so I was like, I need a place where they're allowing that. In San Juan County, they had these land banks where if you were trying to stay active, these parks and reserves, like nature reserves and stuff, they stayed open specifically so people could come and be active and not have bad health during this COVID-19 closure time. So while travel between counties was restricted, um, they made, they had a list of exceptions. So I was able to travel because of my activity. Um, I, I was doing it for health reasons. So if you were not doing it for health reasons, like I was like, I was trying to heal this knee injury I was having. So prescription is go hiking, but the hike places where I could hike near me were closed or I tried that and it wasn't right for my knee. It was too much or too little, that kind of thing. So it in like between county travel was restricted and I had to fill out forms or permit applications and stuff with my information on it. Um, so that was kind of within state travel and then there were restrictions during the surges to stay within your county and certain counties that would have zero COVID-19 cases would request people to not visit so that it didn't create an outbreak in their county, that kind of stuff. So that at the state level was what happened. And then my last category for this podcast is uh, international travel. And so this was really substantial. It did crush my dreams of going to Ireland for heritage travel in 2020. I bought my, I started planning for this trip and um, well, kind of my whole life, but like very directly making purchases, getting maps, getting books, stuff like that in 2017. And I bought my tickets to go to Ireland in July 2019 for May to June 2020 and all my flights were canceled or changed postponed due to COVID-19 and so those the travel restrictions I experienced is it's a no-go unless you want you are essential travel you have to self-quarantine for 14 days in Ireland um, that kind of thing so they were very severe restrictions and I was like my goal is to go to Ireland and see Ireland so staying in one place for self-quarantine isn't really gonna work um, so I have not been able to go and yeah and they are now requiring proof of negative test and as of 2021 and so I'm still waiting to see have enough money one and two uh, kind of have the COVID-19 pandemic and kind of like with the swine flu pandemic in 2010 it does end there somehow some way it'll end um, or the disease uh, disease will die off or something like that um, but right now it hasn't and then I, the other international travel I have known of it happening. My sister went to Costa Rica in March 2021, so it is still possible to do international travel. They went on, my sister and her husband, they went on vacation. So it was about as far from essential travel as you can get. And Costa Rica was like, come on over. We'll even set you up for two weeks if you need a quarantine. Um, they had hotels doing stuff like that. And so in some places, international travel has actually been embraced during COVID-19. And Costa Rica is one of those. So my sister and her husband went and they didn't even have to get a vaccine. And they, all they had to do was get going to the country and leaving the country. All they had to get was a negative test. So they had to get a test if they had coronavirus and it had to be negative. And that was all they needed for travel. And like, literally that was it. And so uh, I know, and theirs was like a last minute trip. So they didn't, it wasn't like planned years in advance or months in advance kind of thing. It was kind of a last minute thing, at least as, my sister presented it to my parents and I. And so, I mean, it is possible to do international travel 
And then there are people who might uh, travel even though they're not supposed to and they don't mind getting, having to pay a fine. I'm not that kind of a person. So I'm, I'm, I'm patiently waiting. I, I, I am capable of being patient, so I'm waiting. Um, and so that's kind of travel restrictions I have encountered due to COVID-19 starting in 2019 and continuing to present 2021 because there are still restrictions enforced between Ireland and the United States of America. So I still haven't traveled because of COVID-19. And so to Ireland because of COVID-19. And so that's kind of a wrap up. The only other thing I'll add, and it gets back to the first topic, COVID-19 sideswiped my life and my goals and dreams of kind of working in the aerospace industry. And it might come around, who knows, uh, what did I end up doing? I ended up YouTubing. So if you're enjoying my YouTube channel and stuff like that, you have COVID-19 to thank because I would, I, I had planned on continuing my YouTube channel, but the scale at which I am operating is far above anything I had ever anticipated. And so that is entirely due to COVID-19. I've had the time to stop and actually do this kind of stuff. And I'm not making money on YouTube yet. I'm, I'm ever hopeful, but yet being the most important word here. And, um, or I'm not making money from YouTube yet, I should say. And why I'm so happy I took this path and chose to be a YouTuber. I feel like a YouTuber now. I am a YouTuber. I identify with that term. Um, and I'm so happy I did it in part because after a year or two of posting videos, I did a calculation as to how long would it take me to get 25,000 views on the videos on my channel. And my calculation resulted in 30 years. It would take me 30 years. And to reach 100,000 views, it would take more years than are left in my lifetime if I live to be over 100 years old. And so I was like, okay, I'm never going to reach 100,000 views and I'm never going to reach 25,000 views or I'm not, it's going to take decades to get there. This is just, it's, it's not looking like it's going to be a viable option for me. And then I'm now just a couple years after that, so that would have been about 2018. So about three years later, I have over 125,000 views and it continues to go up every day. So I have literally achieved the impossible in my life and what I thought I could do on YouTube. So I am I am pursuing this wholeheartedly. Um, and, and so that, that's been a lot of fun and I, I'm hopeful and excited to see what comes out of it um, and, and maybe I do get back and I do get a job at Boeing or in the aerospace industry or something working or at General Motors working on steels and car frames and airplane engine design like that would be and it doesn't have to be designed just like troubleshooting I, I, I love I love the problems there are to solve when it comes to airplane engines um, and the aerospace engine in the aerospace industry. So I would say COVID-19 has sideswiped my life and my aerospace kind of goals and work kind of goals, but uh, it's been for the better, for sure. I, and, and not just in work, but like I've been able by, I'm still living at home because I haven't gotten one of those jobs that I had intended to get when I got home because the manufacturing industry got hit so bad. There were a bunch of layoffs, a bunch of plants closing, not the right time to get a job. So I'm still living at home with like, I think I made $11 of income in 2020. Like it, it is far from ideal. <laughs> and this is because of COVID-19. Um, but the perks of living at home, I've been able to work through problems or issues with my parents that I never thought we'd be able, or not that I never thought we'd be able to work through, but that it would be a long time um, working through. And we've, we've been making leaps and bounds in just our relationship with each other, like me and my mom and me and my dad and my parents together and us three together. And so I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't change what has happened for anything. And for everybody who enjoys my COVID-19 channel and how it's grown and developed in 2021, in 2020 and into 2021, you got COVID-19 and me, because I could have chosen not to do this. Some people kind of stopped posting on YouTube during COVID-19. I went the opposite way and I decided to post during COVID-19. So it's me and COVID-19 that you 
you can you can think if you want to. Um, uh, so I hope you have a great day. This is fun. I hope you've enjoyed. If you're watching the video, watching the teeny tiny little waves rolling. <laughs>